Hey guys, and how's it going? We're going to continue on. This is probably part two on this 1965 Econoline E100 pickup truck that I dragged out of a local property that has uh, been sitting dormant for quite a while. Last video, we got it. I should turn the light on. We got it running <laughs> in that dark hole down in there. And uh, the starter was cutting out on us, plus some other issues. But it did uh, run for about 30 seconds and die when a little bit of fuel that we put in it. So let's continue on, see if we can uh, bring her the rest of the way back to life. And where I left off was he took the starter out and we found one of the wires. It was working, it was underneath here. It was working intermittently. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. And you see, I believe this is gonna be a ground wire, but it's held on by one strand. Uh, probably goes to the windings, I'm not sure. But the brushes look like they're worn down some. It puked out a bunch of this stuff. I was gonna go try and fix it, but the next morning I went shopping. We got a new one for 32 bucks. So not even worth trying to go fix that for that kind of money. Well, let's throw that back in and continue on where we left off. Well, that's gotta be about one of the easiest starters I really ever put in. Can't really film too much down inside there it's just it's kind of a tight compartment to work in but we have it back in i haven't turned the key yet let's let me go hop on the other side see if she cranks with a little bit of fuel and it'll fire it up one more time let's see how we do yeah, fixed our <laughs> you gonna stay running ah that almost did I think uh, it probably has a little bit of fuel in it from last time. I do believe the choke is stuck. It's got a lever on the side here. Yeah, it's really gummy. We gotta take that car apart and clean it anyway. Let's go give it another little bath of fuel. Sounds good though, doesn't it? Although it's loud. So we still gotta do the fuel system, but everything seems to be okay. Both the uh, fuel, I mean the uh, oil and the alternator light go out. Let's go give it one more last. And we can do two, my little bottles in here. We'll backfill the float bowl. I have to feel my carb is probably totally boogered up, but. And I don't know if we wanna take that off next. We want to deal with tires. I ordered a set of tires, 200 bucks for a set of four. But I also got something else, and they'll be in tomorrow. I also ordered an exhaust manifold gasket. You got to pull that manifold off. You got to take that starter back off too at that time. All right, let's give her. Too much gas. You know, this gas pedal work? Yeah, let's go give her a little bit of. Yeah, it's just run off of whatever we put in there, but that's fine. We're good with that. What do you want to play with next? Uh, I like to get it off the trailer. Maybe we'll deal with tires. Like I said, I ordered four new tires for these rims because none of them are worth anything, you know? Especially those. But, <laughs> drum roll please. I also picked up a set of these. Don't know if the backs are going to be have enough room for them to fit. We're going to find out. If they don't fit, I do have an option, but let's go try. I think they look pretty cool. I always like these, and I think they're kind of period correct for the truck. Let's go install them. So 
we got for breaks. While we're here. Maybe. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be laying loose now, is it? It's the uh, e-brake cable. It's got a broken spring. That's gonna need some love too. Looks like it's either pissing gear oil. I would say we probably need probably need wheel cylinders, shoes, all the norm. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go take that off. That's just gonna flap around in there anyway. At least they're not stuck. Wheels fit. I doubt it's gonna clear the wheel well, but we're gonna find out. Front or back. Get out of there. Hmm. We clear the leaf spring in the back, the front, you know, without air shocks. Let's go throw a couple of bolts in it. Set it down. That one's one of those safety nuts. Of course I grabbed the wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll save you the struggle. I'll bring you back in a minute. Someone's not happy about moving day. I get you. It's coming after you. It's going to jump right on you. I like the look. My thing is, I think it's just going to take out the wheel well though. See how much it squats. Look great though. <laughs> Couple here not agreeing with me. It's okay. So what I think I could probably do, we're gonna go try it too. We'll take that back off. We'll put the fronts on there, the skinnier ones, and see what we get for clearance around the lip, if that's gonna fix it or not. And if that's the case, I have these, and they're on my trike. And they can go on the front. Thing is, I do not think they are Unilug. So I don't know if it's going to be the Ford pattern or the Chevy pattern. And I guess we're going to go find out. Go see how the small ones do. They are going to be close. I like the look of the bigger ones though, huh? Not bad. We could always show it air shocks in the back. <laughs> How much room does it have? I could probably put a straight edge up on that tire. I actually think it clears. I think it might be okay. So the plan was to go put those on the front and I'm just testing them on the rear, the rear, the rear for the bolt pattern. And unfortunately they are the wrong ones. You can see that we're inbound all the way around. So 
these are of the larger patterns oh well we're gonna go with the other ones i guess but first let's go see what these look like on the trike these are the fattest of the sets that i have they look awesome yeah that would make a great look and that suspension will really never come down. There's real no weight on the back of this for them to hit. Too bad. Who knows? In the future, I may find another set and we can match it up. But for now, I've got to put it back the way it was. I like that, though. That looks good. So I'm in the front. I'm going to go throw the front wheel on. But I wanted to show something while I'm doing it. They make these little gauges that you could drop on and they'll line up to your lug nuts. And it'll tell you what it is right off the bat. And so these are four and a half. And what I do is I just write right on them. And when I go to the swap meets, we'll call this Eco. <laughs> kind of lines. And that way, when you go to a swap meet, you put this up against the rims, you can kind of tell what size the stuff is that's laying around. And I'll be out done. They make them in six lug. They make them metric. They make them in four lug metric. And I think I have another four lug metric. I guess four lug metric's popular. <laughs> so that's what I'll bring that with me when I go to swap meets and I'll keep an eye out for wheels that would fit. Who's styling now? Oh, they look great. I like the fat tires on the back too. I think we'll work our way around that, either air shocks or air shocks with uh, bump stops so they can't hit the wheel well. Still gives us about three inches of travel. I think they look awesome. I left the uh, safety lugs out of it because the wheels are going to be coming right back off. So you just got four on each. Oh yeah. Let me get the other two slapped on the other side. What a difference that makes. Makes it a totally different truck. Get ready to throw the wheel on the other side. <laughs> Check out all the weights there. Wait, it gets better. First of all, it's on the wrong side of the rim on an alloy wheel. You really shouldn't be having it on the outside. You spin it around and totally 180 from it was weight on the other side. So I think, uh, at some point, they'll go back on my wheel balancer. We yank all that crap off of there and we'll start fresh. But <laughs> I'm not quite sure what was the, uh, the attempt going on there. We'll go put four ounces of weight on each side. And it looks like it was even double row, too. It had a row there and some more right here. See how bad it wobbles when we put it on the car. You looking all tough, little badass truck with your 85 horsepower six cylinder engine. <laughs> Be nice to find a 302 or something for it. That's in the future, maybe. Looking good though, I like that. How about we go take a peek? up under the dirty side, well the dirtier side, and I crawled around on the ground. The first time I looked at it a year ago, let's get some light on the topic, there we go. I think the main rails are Galvi, so they're probably not going to have too much of an issue. See all the scaliness on the floor. And my new starter. The unibody like I talked about earlier. And it's got some blowouts here and there. 
And this will never be a high-end restoration. It's more of a restoration is my style. I will bring it back to safe operating condition. A lot of this stuff is square. It's fairly easy to make. This is the round stuff that's more difficult. Hey, you can see Galvy up in there. You can tell what was galving and what was not. <laughs> it's got a beam front end. Probably a mouse nest in here is what caused all this rust. Again, that's nice because that's square stuff to make. And again, see the galvy up inside it. Which piece is and which piece is not. That's a different, different lip. Main structure looks good all the way around now. I don't know, I'll probably shoot all that in maybe black or we're just gonna shoot it with oil. Uh-oh, I screwed up. Hope I didn't bend that drive shaft. We are on the left. That sucks. Hope I didn't just kill it. No, maybe the suspension's just kind of dropped down and hitting that tab. I didn't see that coming, did I? Oh no, it's just touching it. Still turns. <laughs> Crisis avoided. That's probably the worst of it. It's going to be this wheel well. This one I'll buy. I think it's about 100 bucks to buy that panel. All the other stuff I think we're just going to attempt to make. I want to get better at metalworking. The uh, fill for the gas tank is rotted. Which is actually kind of a good thing. Because it let all the fuel puke out of it somewhere else. And not, not here. It is dripping a little bit. But... Yeah, it's dripping right now. I'm going to put a pan under that. Actually, I might need a gas tank altogether. I see wetness here. So there must be a hole. Oh, that needs to get redone. Hamburger. Now, there is supposed to be, in the back of these, because they are so light and ass in with no body on them, no uh, upper body on them. I like a van. There's supposed to be a 150 pound counterweight that is back here somewhere. That keeps it from when you hit the brakes, the ass end doing a reverse wheelie. <laughs> Part of me kind of actually hopes it's missing so that we can try doing a reverse wheelie. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to price a gas tank. That rocker, or rear quarter panel, I should say. The rockers I'll make. Everything else looks pretty good. All this stuff is fine. I don't see any issues with any of that. You guys from the West Coast are probably laughing, saying, oh my God, you guys put together junk. Look how tiny that drivetrain is. <laughs> that drive shaft's like two inches in diameter. <laughs> Again, I think it's all Falcon stuff. There's a jumper wire for our oil pressure light that we put on there. I would give this, <laughs> you guys are giving it a one. I would give this, I don't know, about a five for our area, right about in the middle for old stuff. Not new stuff, actually new stuff rots out just as bad too. factory drips of something up there. What else did I want to check out? So I think the, probably the next thing is we're going to pull the carb and we'll get that gone through. We'll probably feed fuel from an alternate source. And then uh, we'll be able to run it through the gears, make sure the transmission is okay. Those, those are the major components. Is the engine good? Does it have good oil pressure? Does it not knock? Does the uh, transmission go through all the gears? You really don't know, you know, 
until you put it on the ground and put a load on it, whether it's okay. But you can, you can spin it and see if it goes in all the gears, whether it growls or not. Like there's a little bit of a nest coming out of the, the bottom of the inspection hole on the transmission. It might be, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Let's go look at that manifold on the other side. I'm also looking at the block, make sure there's no, no cracks or anything in it. I don't know if I said I, I registered it. That's all done. Now he's on the road already. Nose all looks good. There's really no Bondo in this thing that I found. I haven't run around it with a magnet. Looks like somebody did a repaint on like half of it. We want to look at that manifold. I don't think we'll be able to see anything from here. Little tiny bump stops where the brake lines run. That's kind of that's kind of janky. What's up with that? Yeah, I think we're gonna have to maybe uh reorientate some of that stuff. Let's see if we put brake line, brake lines on it, but I wouldn't exactly call that factory. See the wheel wells. They're all scaly, but nothing's blown out other than the lowers that we talked about. Little kingpin front end. I think that's kingpin. Yeah, it's kingpin. A couple hundred years of 56 years of pumping grease in it and all the dirt sticking to it. Yeah, this is a great candidate for oil undercoating when it's back together. We could drop this pan too, get it out of our way. So I say order brake parts. Try to keep the light out of here. See the broken studs on that manifold. We're gonna pull that manifold right off there. Like I said, I ordered a new gasket, and hopefully we do our best to bring that manifold back to life. We'll find out if it's cracked anywhere once we have it off. I didn't see anything obvious. Got the muffler has a hole on top. It looks like a very dark. What? Well, you know what that is? That's oil, probably from the tail shaft. So why it's darker right there. Yoke spins. It's a gas tank leak in there too. Yeah, so big purchases. Gas tank. Should probably throw some, there's any shocks anyway. Probably see if we can get a cheap set of air shocks. Possibly make a bump stop. You see the, I'm trying to keep the light. You see how much over the wheel well we are. How much it's going to hit it by. We could probably roll it. I don't know if I want to do that though. Yeah, this brake line's kind of not supported by anything neither. It's just, it's there, but it's really needs to be better corrected together. Here's where the bump stops are. We could probably relocate that down and give it the distance it needs from the rear. Well, like I said, the shocks are blowing out anyway. I think air shocks will be okay. A tiny rear end. <laughs> this thing's light. Like I said, it's only, uh, I think 2,500 pounds is what it weighs. With a GVW of 36. So it's got 1,100 pound payload. Has no seat belts, it's a 65. Probably does not have reverse lights in 65. Won't have hazards. It's probably a single master cylinder, single chamber. <laughs> Tailpipe's tiny too. Looks pretty good though. Gets all the way back to here. We'll see what we got. Yeah. And the front's not tied to anything, so the whole thing. 
wiggling. Alright, we've been staring at this long enough. Let me uh, shut her down and get that carburetor off of there. Alright, so it's the next day. No, it's not it. And do a little online shopping. A little chat while I'm holding the carburetor. The gas tank is uh, a tad pricey it's like 400 bucks that's not including the sending unit and some other stuff so we may go fix that there's a workaround i guess a bunch of guys can like take different tanks and what you have to do is physically alter that's the vacuum line for the distributor you have to physically alter the With a, it's got a weird place where the filler neck goes in. It kind of comes in from the side. Let me, uh, let me, what's this? We take that. I guess we gotta take the bracket with it. Maybe. Come on. Crack for me. It's a new. Yep, there it goes. So the workaround is uh, you gotta kind of do some welding on the tank and and take the filler neck that is on your existing tank and move it so then you can get like, uh, like a they use a falcon there's a couple of different tanks they use even like later econoline ones too uh the so we may end up doing that or we may try to fix the one that we have yeah, it's not gonna play well either is it come okay, in we'll have to come back to that we'll continue Taking lines off. Man. See if any gas comes pouring out of it. There. What else did I look up? Just brake components. They're they're normal. We're we'll probably gonna end up doing that stuff all the way around. Uh, I want to crank it later too with that off and we'll see if any fuel is coming up from the tank uh, The fuel oof. You guys probably smell it from where you are right now We got a vacuum line get The two nuts on the bottom well, That's generally where they are, right? Does that need to even come off? There we go Not sure what that is. What is that just a bowl breather? The vent tube going. I'm not sure where that goes to. It's a standard transmission, so there's no kick down or anything. Now, so we got throttle. I think it's just one of those knuckles that you pop. Try to launch this across the room and can't find it. Let's just when we slide them down. So we got two on the bottom. What are the things that I look into? Right, right here. Where am I going? I'm overshooting it. Right, every wrench I picked up was the wrong one. I've been playing with metric stuff so long my eye calibration is off. For standard. Yeah, because they don't make them really. There's one company that makes them, but that's why they're so pricey. It's not like a Mustang gas tank, which is very common. It was only really used in this in this vehicle. So you're kind of stuck. This thing's got a preheat on it. You see this, the hose coming through? And it looks like it's like heater core hose. If it keeps the manifold from freezing. Something else I looked up to. I'm trying to remember what it was. Didn't look up a radiator yet. I got the new tires came in, but I like what's on it. That's the other thing too. I want to see what we got for possibly air shocks or add a leaf or something at the ass end of 
a little bit more up in here. Oh, and the uh, exhaust manifold gasket came in. I don't think we're going to have time for that one on this one. So more than two. What was it just? <laughs> Do we just need to whack it with a mallet? I think we need to whack it with a soft mallet. Hold on. I remember what it was. Sheet metal. The quarter, that one quarter panel, patch panel, like 110 bucks and you know, whatever for shipping. Something tells me I am missing more hardware. Maybe it doesn't break there. Put a light on the subject. I wouldn't think I'd have to take that lower section. Or is it just 50 something year old adhesion? Changing. Alright guys. <laughs> yeah. Just wrote our carb kit for this too. There we go. Did I bring a rag with me? I did. Keep the opportunity of the heebie jeebies going down inside there. Well, let's go take that over to the bench. Open up these. There's the tag I need to get a carb kit. And uh, take it apart, see what it does. What it does. See what it looks like. The accelerator pump, I would think that would be uh, most of our issue as far as a failure needing a carb kit. Let's go find out. And over on the bench. Let's, let's operate. So that linkage is going to have to come off somehow to separate the two halves. Can we just sneak it out of there? We might be able to sneak it out of there. We'll get it off, rotate it. Yeah, you know, I was looking at some of the footage yesterday, which is the first half of this video probably. What we got? C5, 65 Ford number. And I liked, I was looking at the footage. I mean, that one just, there it goes. Okay, man, don't rip out on me. Or stab myself in the finger. <laughs> and I liked the lighting that was in. I'm like, so what's so different? I was trying to think of like, is it the color of the truck being the orange? Yeah, things in there, huh? that's kind of seized to that. Let's make it so my hand's not down on the other side of it. <laughs> Direct shot. So I like the lighting and I saw the difference was it was old incandescent light bulb, soft light bulb. So the problem with the most recent videos is it just seems like it's so hospitally looking, you know, so sterile. You can see good, but it's just it lost warmth to it. So I went and uh, picked up the kind of like temporary lights when you're doing construction. And they string those uh, yellow lights that are all kind of strung together. And I got two sets of those. They're five. They're fifty footers with like five foot. Uh, five lights on them, so I guess every 10 foot, roughly. Just peeing out the gas. So I got two sets of those and I strung them around. And I think maybe between the combination of the LED lighting that's in here and that, let me make it for a little less white. Like if you looked at, when I was looking at my hands before, we'd see like, yeah, they have a like tinge of yellow. Well, over by the LED lighting, it just everything gets washed out. I was trying to do adjustments with cameras and other cameras, and 
Yeah, I think possibly that might be it. We're gonna go find. I shouldn't have said nothing to you. I just asked you at the second half of the video. Did the lighting change? You really haven't seen it yet because we're not working out in the middle of the shop. Maybe the next video you'll notice it. But hopefully that helps our situation out a little. I think that last one's gonna get us. <laughs> the one that doesn't want to come out. Should have brought that mallet over here. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna. It's being gas. That's the gas I put in there. Apparently, it didn't draw it up though. I, I would figure the. Let's see if we can get that one coming. I think the bracket has seized onto the screw come on Do it. are you are you off yeah you're already off let's see if you can rotate that there we go we, we are in not terrible Some dirt in there. Does not really look all that bad. It's a vent move. Yeah. I don't have the right screwdriver for that yet. We'll wait on that for a second. Can we get the pin out? Didn't sink. Doesn't look terrible. Let me get that out. I don't know if we want to mess with the gaskets. I don't have a carb kit. Let's uh, grab. I'll go dump that fuel out and we'll continue. Right, where were we? I think we were going to take. And I almost lost the check ball for the accelerator pump. I want to take the accelerator pump. Linkage off. See what that looks like. If this is uh, terrible, maybe we'll just cl clean it over the night time and I'll grab a kit in the morning if it's available. I'd like to get it back together again and fire it up on a auxiliary tank you know yeah, at that point it'll be yard driving and next is that manifold see if you can just take that thing right off of there and uh, you think dun 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 will it still move <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's solid as a rock. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. That gives it a little squirt. When you hit the gas, it gives it a little extra shot of fuel. Yeah, it's done. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think uh, that is going to be able to go for the next round. All right. I mean, we can put it back together. It's just you're going to hit the gas. It's going to fall on its face. There's another one. Don't lose them all. And that came out of there. Your fuel mix, we get that screw out. Oh boy, she's gummy. How many years do you think that last time that turned? There, a washer there. 
I've never had one of these apart, so you and I are experiencing it together. I don't think there's no reason to pull that off. The pliers for that. Oh, what do we got? The upper half, you get the jet out of it. That screwdriver, are we? That's a screwdriver. And can you come out with that? I would think so. What's in the center? Need a poker. We got this a poker. That's fixed. Come out from the other side. And just go straight up through. We'll let that ride. You think our chances are getting that gasket off of there? Maybe pretty good. So you don't get rid of your fingernails. Alright, so we need the accelerator pump at minimum. If we get a carb kit, great. If not, we're going to go call it. Hopefully when we soak it, maybe this thing will free up too. Anything else? That looks pretty good, right? How about this, How about this one? Just take that off. Everything else I think is okay. Yeah, the choke. I know that. Yeah, it's, it's freeing up, but it's got a bunch of tar. That'll that'll come right back when it gets soaked. Let me get that last piece off and put it in the bath. You know, the lighting is. It looks better to me, at least through here. I'm trying to convince myself. It's it's that those guys. Ten of them are strung up. Kind of going around in a circle. What do you want to do next? What we can do while that's soaking, why don't we put the jumper pack back on it and we'll crank it. We'll see if we get any fuel coming out of here. If we don't, maybe we'll take the fuel line off the fuel pump and we'll plug it into a can and we'll crank it over again and we'll see if we can get the fuel pump to prime fuel. That way we can check the pump and uh, if that's the case, that's what we can run it off of. If not, we'll have to gravity feed from up above and have it drop down and then go figure out what's wrong with the fuel pump. Let's yeah, see what we get. Oh, yeah, suck that rag in the intake. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Just go pop that off in case it does start. <laughs> there might be some remnants behind, you know? All right, let's go. And I hope that that is the tank being empty. So let me go pop around the fuel pump, wherever that is. And we'll swap some lines off of that and see if we can get to push something through. There's the fuel pump. It looks like a filter's kind of built into the top of it. I'm looking at the input fuel line. And I would say that's the factory crimp. 56 year old fuel line on there. New stuff. Now, the new yes. And right, we go pop that off. We'll pop a fuel line on, give it a spin, and see if we get anything. It'll be a little hard for you to see. You might just stretch your neck a little. I don't know how hard it's going to be to cut that. That clamp off. Some better side cutters are probably. Do wonders too. Let's not rip the face of the.
Any gas will come out. Nada. Hopefully that whole system's just dry. All right, let me go get some fuel line, a tank, and uh, we'll try it again. That'll do it. And we'll use a gas can or a gas can. There we gotta go. We get about an inch from the bottom, too far. That should do it. Might as well shove a, a see-through. Yeah, we'll come back about even much. We'll shove a see-through fuel filter right here, and then we can kind of tell right away if we have fuel and if we run out. Put that on in, and I'm gonna cut that hose back, and we'll put the other side on it. And we got a tank. Got to handhold you for a second, so I put that. On the other side, and then we're just so from the pump to the tank, and then it should come back into the cup. Let's see what we get. Sure, man. Out of harm's way at the fan, yeah. There it goes. She's she's uh. After it goes through the fuel pump, what color do you think we're going to get up here? <laughs> Good thing for a new starter. <laughs> I'll give it another second. Come on, Keith. I can let it cool down a little bit. I'll keep cranking until we get something. I'm gonna let it cool down for about 10 minutes. And uh, that's just running off a jumper pack too. It's not even a battery. I think it does good. So I held it up in the air and it's just gravity feeding on its own. I'm gonna suck that whole can down. Make sure it's not uh, <laughs> just dumping it on the ground, you know? I'm afraid of it might be doing. So I refilled the can with KM2, marked it so they don't use it later as, let's go see what cranking does for us now. <laughs> oh, good thing it's not on the wire side. All right. I'd say it looks pretty, pretty red like the uh, two-stroke fuel that was put in there good and I'm also glad that I, again I, I try to stuff this hasn't been around a long time I like to use something that's got a little two-stroke oil mixed in with it, it just kind of makes it the uh, little more uh, slippery and uh, any kind of rust that's on anything of the pistons and the valves it kind of helps lubricate breaking it away because new fuel is so dry not like old gas it had you know, it was in your fingers you can kind of feel it it was slippery for a while new gas now it's just more like an alcohol Let's see if I can play catcher. So I'd say that fuel pump looks pretty clean. A little bit of crap in there, but not bad. Hey, right. I just need a carb. 
And the carb's all set to go. That's the choke. Flaps a little better now. <laughs> Come out pretty clean. I could have soaked it longer, but I don't want to damage anything that I'm not aware of that I didn't take out. You know, non-metal wise. So we'll wait on the kit. See if we can get that tomorrow. And through the magic of video. One carb kit. With all the goodies hopefully we need. I bought it. Why is the one you always want on the bottom? I'm just gonna make sure that that looks like the right one. And most importantly is the accelerator pump. It actually looks like there's two in the box there. Good. We're in. Break the seal, you own it. <laughs> I want that moves a little easier, huh? Are they the exact same thing? For next time? Do we have a, a spare? Does that not look like the same? I would say so. Hmm. Guess I should match it up to the one we have, huh? Winner, winner, and you know the rest. All right, let's go put this thing together. Let's well, start with the accelerator pump. That's the return spring and pump. And what the idea is, woohoo! This has a couple of check valves in it and it returns it gives a squirt of fuel whenever you stomp on the gas every time you stomp on a gas it pushes this diaphragm well on the other side of that diaphragm is, is full of fuel the chamber is allowed to fill up but it's got a check valve it does not allow the fuel to go back into the float bowl instead it gives a squirt up and in and down the center of it and it gives you that uh, instant shot of fuel because you kind of go lean when you nail the gas so this just richens that up when you do that so let's go through that in a place Whoops. Somebody's upside down. Again, we do it right because we do it twice.
That'll be... Our little secret. Good. We're all set. Let's go backfill that carb. I want to make sure that the accelerator pump works. I am filling up the float bowl. the gas we getting squirting out of it that's no good it's leaking on the side of the pump Trouble in paradise. This surface is probably warped, so I am actually going to go take it. Yeah, it is. I can see it. I'm going to go lay it on a flat surface and try to do our best to sand that flush again. Here you can see the warpness of it. Not sure on up. It's got a curve to it. That like that. <laughs> I'll give me a finger like that. Sometimes not everything works out. Oh, yeah, definitely. That works. And back in the office. Let's go get use the correct gasket. This all back together. Any linkages we need to put together while it's going down? I don't think so. I think everything we can just kind of get popped on there. like a kitten or grab the oil change stuff also I got a filter and fresh oil I want to run it some we got to do that the exhaust manifold is what's got me a little leery taking it's already got broken stuff on it you know and then we go to take it apart what else breaks can turn into could be an hour, could be 10. <laughs> <laughs> 
just how that stuff goes, you know. I even grabbed the right wrench. The carb kit was like 37 bucks. The carb kit was more expensive than the starter was. Funny how that works, right? I can't see over here. Can you see? So we got a choke cable to get on. Let's get the choke cable on first. We got two adjustments. That, where is the choke? The choke is down is off. That's on. So all the way down. It's going to be all the way off. Is there any old witness marks? Sometimes you can see. Yeah, I think we're right, right on the money. Put it where it was. open choke you know let's go I'm gonna pull up a hair on it just so that it has a little bit of pressure but just to take the slop out of it you know All right, let's go see if that functions for us closed open we can put that breather hose on we can do vacuum Let's put the vacuum in advance on the distributor when you floor it, it advances the timing helps the little fireball get started earlier so we got we got throttle linkage which I may have should have done before that one that's on the side here Make it popped on, then we gotta pull the sleeve up over. Probably should put a drop of oil in there. That wouldn't have been bad. Let's give it gas. Squirts fuel down the center. We got our new fuel supply. Looks like it's Kind of on the angle. Let's give that a little, a little bend. There we go. Start. Start without cross threading. I probably should have took a wire wheel of those threads, huh? They're kind of nasty. That needs to bend towards me somewhere. Here's where I make a mess of it. <laughs> That's not starting. I'm gonna go take a wire wheel and go clean those threads up and then put that on. Yeah, shall we? We'll go with no choke. Okay, Ryan. Talking about gas leak. We have fuel leak. Still leaking up there. Hmm. Sounding good though, huh? Seal up. Are 
you don't like to go. This stuff is so soft, you. I don't want to be overzealous. You know what I mean? It's still leaking. Yeah, I think it's that upper one. Or there's supposed to be an O-ring in there that I didn't get. Oh, we're getting into scary territory now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to kill that. We're so close. I just stripped something out, you know. Third time the charm. Come on, key. I don't think there's a, I think it's a pipe thread, I don't think it's, do we ever even take that all the way out? If it's not, I would explain it maybe when I moved it, make sure there's no split or nothing on the end of it too. I'm gonna go look under that magnifying glass and take a quick peek and see if there's any scratches or anything that's in there. I didn't see anything. We'll do is we'll throw, we'll throw a wrench on it. Leave that loose, get that one started. Let's run that one in. Support that one. Not much pressure there. It's probably five psi. Yeah. Do it without killing the fitting.
smoke. Other than that ratty ass exhaust. Before I get asphyxiated. Let's go shut her off. Vent the garage. Open the door. Good. I think we uh, jump on the exhaust manifold next. Then we get the air cleaner on it and all that. We can fine tune that air fuel mix. But I think we got it. And uh, at least we got it to the point where it may drive. We still have to check the, you know, the rear and the transmission stuff out and clutch. But we're getting much closer. All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up right here. I want to thank you all guys for hanging out, doing some wrenching with me, bringing old junk back to life. And with that, see you soon on the next one. Till then, later. Ha! It runs. <laughs>